that means in the light of these three we need to look at any academic program as you are all happen to be the commerce and uh, management teachers i thought this is the relevant opportunity to interact with them on the issue that to on a prominent subject concerned with the future application that is uh, organizational behavior so that i will be making uh, based on an assumption my presentation before you whenever you feel like questioning or leveling criticisms or comments take the liberty to stop me at any point of time and ask you a question so that both of us can understand something better it's an age old uh, saying that yeah, is <laughs> please mute mute and speak i am just starting my presentation with a quote by alvin toffler i'm sure you you have heard of alvin toffler's name who is the author of future stock alvin toffler has written a very popular book called future stock wherein while emphasizing the need and the importance of education he has quoted that to help our future shock we must create a super industrial educational system and to do this we must search for our objectives methods in the future rather than in the past education must shift into the future then meaning if at all we wish to adjust ourselves to any changes that happens in the world in our life that can be addressed only with the help of education when we speak of education education must always be futuristic there is no greatness in talking about the glory and talking about the historical past we must understand the future requirement as the things are changing in order to adapt ourselves to the changing environment we must always speak in terms of what has to be done in the future rather than what we did so far therefore that you for farmers and management people whose every day life and every day business related thinking are concerned with the shaping future leader future manager this is an appropriate uh, beginning to think of devising our educational system our teaching pedagogy to suit the future needs of the industry that was the understanding based on this as everybody knows the graduates that we are going to make maybe in commerce or business administration let it be bcom bba bca ca icwa mcom mba these are all the total number of courses that comes under commerce and business education when students pass out these examination normally the general tendency is to expect an outcome from them how does a commerce graduate a management graduate or an md or an mcom graduate should look like when i say look like not physically in terms of his knowledge in terms of his ability how he should look like generally what people expect from any graduate is that a deep knowledge of the subject and the program that he or she has successfully completed our graduates when they go out must be able to defend themselves about the course that they have studied study and the basic theme of the subject that they have studied they must have the capacity to engage in self reflection and lifelong learning our graduates must be able to self reflect by looking at them people must can, must understand that oh he is a commerce graduate he is a management graduate he can solve a problem he can he is an accountant something like that and uh, no degree stops at uh, the end of the term day the real degree starts after obtaining the certificate he becomes a graduate after getting the degree certificate and his responsibility is going to be more and he should become a lifelong learner teachers you know more particularly 
are the full time learners. All the time we need to learn ourselves. And more than anything, you must have some practice. Sir, sorry to disturb you. Um, sir, I was very keenly waiting for your lecture, but because of the poor audio quality, um, I think it is uh, not making a very good impact. Um, can you please use some headset or some Bluetooth audio device so that it will be more better? Okay. I appreciate your concern. I will call my technician. It may be. Please wait for a while. Please be online. I will try to rectify this. Sir, it is audible. With that we are developing a deep knowledge of the subject, capacity to engage in self-reflection, transferable skills suitable for employment, and deep understanding of and respect for diversity, pluralistic society, and the culture is what expected from any graduate. Same is the case with commerce graduates from the colleges and the university. But as a matter of fact, business education today is at its crossroads. People are not very clear as to what is this business education is all about, what type of content, syllabus, teaching, methodologies that we need to adopt, that many people are not aware. Even the so-called uh, professors, the so-called practitioners, are not in a position to understand what is to be taught at the content of the subject that we are learning. Normally, what they do, what they do. Successful business management or business courses means many a time people think it is something to imitate successful businessmen. When I say imitating successful businessmen, we take the examples of big names. How did they make money? How did they become rich overnight? How did they expand their wealth property? That we take examples and that we explain before our students. As a result of that, the modern business education is preparing people to work accepting the modern capitalism. We are making them to love capitalism, become industrialists, make money overnight, become rich, something like that. And indirectly, we are making our students more greedy and stupidity that leads to make them into fraudulent practices only with an intention to become rich and uh, wealthy. Am I reaching? Can you follow me? Along with, this, along with this, we are preparing generations of ref reflective course, corporate leaders. Reflective corporate leaders mean by quoting the examples of big leaders, we want them to be some, somebody like that. Somebody like that. As a result of this, what's happening, our students are also, our practicing manager also, with an intention of becoming rich overnight, they are indulged in corporate crime, forgetting the professionalism and professional ethics. Therefore, many a time, they have become a, a little inhuman, socially uh, disconnected, and thinking that doing business means making money, that's it. Therefore, there is a need to think about the practicality of doing business with a broader perspective than simply making them money-making machines or simply encouraging them to become uh, uh, the wealth monger. With this broad background, I am going to talk to you about the subject, organizational behavior. I don't know how many of you are into teaching the subject organizational behavior. May I know how many of you are into teaching organizational behavior? Yes, sir, I am teaching. Okay, one, only one. Sir, I am also, sir. Sir, I am also. I was teaching, sir, for MCOM students earlier. Wonderful. Organizational behavior subject. I have taken... Sir, I am also teaching, sir. So, good to know that. I have taken the subject with an intention to interact with people who are into teaching the subject. Instead of taking a general topic, I wanted to make this a session wherein we can share 
make an introspection to understand the subject organizational behavior therefore if there are couple of people who have already taught the paper they can come to my rescue they will help me to make it little more effective so that let me take you towards understanding what is the subject is all about at the first instance organizational behavior is the study of human behavior in an organizational setting it is a multidisciplinary subject concerned with understanding individual and the group behavior it also deals with interpersonal process and the organizational dynamics this is a subject emerged from multidisciplinary background including content taken from psychology sociology political science economics history and to connect name the subject you can relate that subject to organizational behavior as a result of that teaching the subject calls for calls for knowledge of everything you must be universally thinking being so that you can interconnect knowledge from different discipline knowledge that is useful for our day to day life therefore uh, drawing a line between the contents of the subject organizational behavior is a tough task it also deals with engineering it deals with medicine it deals with history it deals with mathematics statistics economics name the subject that can be connected therefore teaching a subject of this kind calls for extensive reading lot of preparation otherwise the subject becomes boring many people people say what is there to teach but there is a number of things that you can investigate that you can make interesting for both the profession and the life what it is all about i am once again giving a definition to take you towards the subject it is the study and application of knowledge about how people as individuals and members of the group act in an organization but the first instance it is concerned with the knowledge related to understanding the people and applying that knowledge about how people behave you must be knowing that's a complicated thing to understand and understand manage the most complicated thing because no formula no laboratory is competent enough to predict what happens at a given point of time in the mind of a human being the chemical reaction that happens in the human brain cannot be easily predicted it is true that man is a social animal but society is made up of diverse type of people and as a result knowing them is a tough task that too man's behavior when he is alone when he is in the company of somebody when he is with a purpose happens to be different as a result of that there is a need to understand how people behave as individuals and as groups in an organization needless to say what is an organization for commerce people organization includes any setup where there is more than one person engaged in doing something common oliver said a noted thinker has mentioned one plus one makes an organization if you go by the definition one plus one makes an organization everything starting from a family family is the first type of organization a family a temple a church a mosque a factory a company do you know for that matter is an organization which are all made up of people organizations are basically made up of people there is a popular saying it is the people who make an organization and at the same time it is the people who break it for the success or failure of any organization it is the people who are responsible even in the present day business organization there are successful companies and the failed company the reason for the success or the failure is not the equipment is not the wealth is not the building 
it is the people therefore understanding the people is the toughest task it is inevitable we have to be with them we need to understand them organizational behavior deals with these issues how people think in the way that they are thinking why are they thinking like this and how to make them to think in the way that we expect that is the purpose further it is a systematic study of the nature of the organization organizational behavior is concerned with a systematic study of the nature of the organization what type of organization it is is it a profit making organization non profit friendship group is it a charity what type of organization is it a domestic company international company is it a company with a purpose of mankind's improvement well being is it a government organization private organization what type of company it is that we study under the subject organizational behavior further we also study with how it was started how it is grow how it is developed and what is the impact of this organization on the constituent group constituent group and at large on the society with the development of this organization how the society is going to be impacted that is the subject matter of organizational behavior if anybody can help me to add anything please feel free okay i am precisely telling organizational behavior is a subject that deals with understanding people in the working place if you understand the people and their behavior in the working place you can make them to work as we expect it is the people element that is the most dynamic element in the factors of production unless you make the people to work for you rest of the things will become waste keeping that in mind i am going further what are the factors that influence organizational behavior the most important thing say for instance when i say organizational behavior it deals with how people behave in an organization the behavior of the people can be seen in, ter in terms of the production that they make type of product that is produced and at the same time quality of the product the profit that they are making their ethical consideration their ethical consideration their relationship with the society their interaction with the government all the things are concerned with organization in india how are they exploiting the nature how are they helping people whether they are consumer friendly whether they are money monger or welfare oriented company those things are connected with organizational behavior what are the factors that influence the thinking of the organization the most prominent factors that influences the organizational behavior are at the first instance people 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 only what is there to know about people can anybody comment on this when i ask a question when i say people what is there to know about them people is the society people are from different backgrounds organizations are made up of people from varied experience expertise nationality background likes dislikes etc that we need to study and the environment environment means here the surrounding socio economic political technical legal all types of environment that within which the organization is working that we need to study followed by that structure structure means relationship authority and responsibility how many layers are there who is the boss who is the subordinate how do they command who cares for whom who is giving command and who is listening to orders that we are, we are going to study and the next one is technology the nature of the organization and the functioning of the organization is going to be influenced by technology today we are living in a tech based business technology is ruling everything that's in terms of artificial intelligence 
Internet of Things, robotic technology, man has become just incidental. Most of the things technology can do. Keeping this in mind, how can we make our organization to work effectively and efficiently? That is the question before us. When I said this, I should also take you quickly about the nature of the subject organizational behavior. Why do we study the subject organizational behavior? Organizational behavior, the objective of studying the subject is three. One is to understand the behavior, why people are like this. Am I reading? Why people are like this? When somebody is working very hard, someone is lazy. When somebody is highly productive, someone is not. When somebody is regular, other one is absent. When somebody is intelligently solving all the problems, another person is creating problems. When someone is helping, other one is disruptive. Why is it like this? Understanding the people. Followed by that, when you understand the people, you can predict their behavior. You can predict the behavior. If I say this, what they will do? If I do this, how they will respond? Predicting the behavior. By predicting the behavior, in order to make them to be online, we need to control them. We need to control. Controlling is something that nobody likes. But when controlling becomes inevitable, we need to rise to the occasion and control them. Because man does not like to be controlled by anybody. What we like the most is freedom. Am I reaching? But many people don't deserve freedom, but they look for that. When it becomes inevitable, we have to restrict. Within the framework, there comes the question of human rights. There comes the question of human ethics. Within ethical boundaries, we need to manage the people. For that purpose, we study the subject organizational behavior. The content of the subject, you know, I'm, very, I'm making it very precise. The content of the subject concerned with facts about people and their working environment. And you make a critical analysis of the facts about the people and their working environment. And you go for interpretation. Now, with this background, you have to understand the people in the working group. I've been repeatedly telling, understanding the people is the most challenging thing, but it is inevitable. No two persons are identical. There is a popular saying, man is the same, but men are different. Man is the same, men are different. In an organization, there will be all types of people, but you have to make all types of people to work for you, all types of people to listen to you. Even in a classroom, you know, even in a class, there will be uh, 60 or 70 students coming from different strata of the society with a different background, different expectations. You have to make them to look at you with one clear purpose. That you can do only when you devise a strategy to reach out to everybody. You devise a strategy to get the attention of everybody. Organizational behavior, the subject, you know, is aiming at getting the most from the manpower. Because manpower is the most valuable asset of any company, any business. I'm not going to speak about uh, the emergence of the subject organizational behavior. Many people will be knowing. The subject organizational behavior has been developed based on the recommendation, based on the findings of a popular study called Hawthorne Experiment. I don't know how many of you can recall the findings of Hawthorne Experiment. Hawthorne Experiment led towards the creation and the establishment of a new school of thought, the new school of thought called Human Relations Approach to Management. Human relations approach to management believes that man is not a machine. By forcing, by threatening, you cannot get the things done. If at all you wish to get the things done, you have to win the loyalty of the people. 
with the loyalty of the people you can make people to be committed to your company your organization and you can achieve the purpose otherwise what happens if you impose your views if you restrict their movement if you dictate the terms your own people will become your enemy you have to respond to me otherwise it becomes boring am i reaching to you yes sir yes sir you are right sir my cough sir yes sir yes sir yeah i think you are all getting my point yes we are getting sir yes sir yes sir my cough as per the condition is the perfect condition yes sir okay therefore in order to make the people to respect your command look at your orders you need to be able to attract the attention of the people how it can be done even it can be applied for a classroom environment even classroom is an organization and you are the leader you are the boss in the class students of varied background varied expertise varied uh, intention are to be made to listen to you how can you do so unless you have have some extraordinary quality to grab the attention of everybody you will become a mockery you will become a laughing stock because people cannot understand you therefore in an organization where the purpose of the company is to achieve something in common the workers of the company come to the organization for their own reason people are not coming to help you people are coming to work for solving their problems they are coming there to earn their livelihood but i am running my business to make profit for my company to maximize wealth of my investment therefore giving this reason you need to understand the people properly but understanding people calls for knowing what are all the different characteristics of people the subject organizational behavior is basically aimed at studying the people at three different levels one is people as individual second one people as group and the third one people in the organizational level there is a difference between group and the organization inside an organization there can be any number of group as teachers of commerce will be knowing there are informal group formal group of different type within an organization but ultimately it is the people who matter know the people with you first i am taking you casually what are the different types of people whom you have to manage the different types of people you know and i will just run through there are a variety of people who you can imagine whom you have seen in your surrounding the first type of people are hostile and aggressive people they won't listen to anybody they are always imposing their view aggressive second type of people complainers they are the people always come with complaints that is not good this is not good that's not right power is not working something like that and the third category clams clams are the people whom you can call buffoons they always make fun of everything however serious you are they make fun laugh and forget and next type of people are negative negative are the people who always say it is not possible when you give a job when you give an assignment they don't do that instead they come out with comments that it is not possible it will not work something like that and the other category super agreeable super agreeable are the people who accept the things before you complete your sentence whatever you say they will say you are right sir you are right sir. they want to please you and as a result they don't think at all they are super agreeable even in the classroom working environment you can find this type of people and next category of people you know know it all they pretend like as if they know everything under the sun that is another category the third, next category i call them balloons balloons are the people who always come with a pampering word they always come to appreciate you and they want you to appreciate them they are called balloons and indecisive scholars indecisive scholars are the people who don't do anything but simply postpone postpone 
and uh, stall all your activities. Followed by that, devil's advocate. They always come with criticism. They criticize people. And the last category that I have listed is scapegoats. Scapegoats are the people who will become the victims of the acts of others. These are all the different types of people whom you can find everywhere. But we have to make all of them to listen to my command, to respect my words, and to discharge their duties in an attempt to achieve the common goal or objective for which we are all working. I am skipping most of the things thinking that you are all commerce and management teachers, you can understand. If, if you are not getting any connectivity with whatever I am saying, take the liberty to question me. As I was telling, for the purpose of achieving corporate or company objectives or even the classroom purpose, you need to synchronize the thinking of all these different types of people, make them to work for a common purpose. There comes the importance of the subject, organizational behavior to be used in a different sense. Presently, the happenings around us, as I told you, the industrial revolution, the pandemic, the changing government policy has created a lot of havoc in the business world. As a result of that, some unpredicted, unexpected happening had happened that you can call the business turbulence. The present day business has experienced an unprecedented, uncontrollable, a high velocity impact, which influences not only the people concerned with the organization, but on the entire society. And to say that implications of the corporate changes can be seen on the life of the people. Change in prices, Changing salary structure will definitely make an impact on the community. Therefore, we must not think that organizational behavior is subject connected with only companies. No. It influences the life of the people, common man. Therefore, it is necessary to understand how people work in an organization, how the organizational behavior subject can be interpreted. Now I will be taking you towards Understand, understanding the demands of Industrial Revolution 4.0. I'm sure, I'm sure you are all out of Industrial Revolution 4.0. Can anybody tell me what is your understanding of Industrial Revolution 4.0? Yara Dhruma Tadi, Yande Kedenda Mata Dhruma, Akkadizar Kelspata Dharayil Vanta Gita Gelaadi. Somebody can unmute and see. What do you know about Industrial Revolution 4.0? Sir, railway sector. Privatized. Privatization? Of railway sector, sir. Privatization of railway sector. My question was, what do you know about Industrial Revolution 4.0? Industrial Revolution 4.0 on Reno. Whether all of you can understand Canada? Sir. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe automation of the work culture in the organization and the automation, integration of everything with the work culture. Sir, paperless Technology. Paperless Technology. Paperless. Sir, focusing more on uh, digitalization instead of uh, the old uh, method. Probably, sir. It may make integration of work from home after pandemic, sir. Integration of work from home offer. It may make in India. Thank you. Please now mute your phone. Okay. Uh, most of you came out uh, with an answer closer to that. But you are not confident in say what it is. You are guessing. Yes. You are guessing about it. Industrial revolution. Started with the establishment of the factory. Since that period, a number of a number of changes had happened in the progress of the industry. 
Industrial Revolution 4.0 is a fusion, is a synergy, is an integration of digital technology, particularly artificial intelligence, robotics, Internet of Things, genetic engineering, quantum computing, etc. What is it all about? See here, there are four levels, four revolutions that had happened over this period. Industrial Revolution 0.1 was concerned with mechanization. Factory system came into existence. Factories started using machines. That was Industrial Revolution 1. Industrial Revolution 2 was the use of electricity and huge machines, mass production. Mass production. And Industrial Revolution 3. It was the computerization. It is the computer era, computerization of the thing, computerized industry. And the fourth level, fourth level, you know, the fourth level is digitization. Exactly, it is, it is the application of digital technology. Presently, whenever you use the word digital technology, you must think in terms of application of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has grown to an extent of replacing human intelligence. But it cannot absolutely replace, but we have reached the situation wherein everything can be done by the machine. The machine can imagine what you are thinking. What you are thinking. Say for instance, on the computer, if you are searching for some information, Within no second, the computer will come out with a solution that you are searching for this. Are you interested in looking for this? Artificial intelligence, internet of things. Artificial intelligence is applied into every sector. Marketing, production, finance, information technology, healthcare, hospitals, diagon diagonizing the disease. Everything can be done with the help of artificial intelligence. Hence, it is called Industrial Revolution 4.0, wherein the human element is minimized with the application of digital technology. OB, organizational behavior as a matter of fact, is concerned with making the people to work for us, making the people to listen to our command. Now this technology is replacing the human hand. This technology is changing the working environment. This technology has created a tremendous change in the organizational setup. What are the implications of this industrial revolution? I'm just making an highlight, which you can think for a while. There are a lot many things to think. Say, for instance, the result of Industrial Revolution 4.0 is, I'm starting from one point, shorter product life cycle. What does it mean? The product life cycle that we knew determines the fate of any business. A business will become practical or outdated based on the life cycle. Today, the digital technology is making the product life cycle to move very fast. Today's in newly invented product will become outdated tomorrow. What you claim as the latest today will become outdated tomorrow. Even the knowledge that you have, you know, your knowledge will become outdated soon. You may think that I got the latest information. No, tomorrow it will become outdated. There is a popular saying, today's imagination will become tomorrow's past and tomorrow's past will become day after tomorrow's history. You will become history soon. Your product will become outdated soon. Therefore, companies are affected by this. Business is affected by this. Okay. Second one is dynamic value chain network. As commerce teachers, you can understand business teachers, value chain. The value chain system 
has altered. It has become very dynamic. There are people who are working behind the screen just to facilitate packaging. There are people who are working for delivery. Say, for instance, today we are living in an economy called gift economy. Gift economy means temporary jobs. Lots of people are working. Some ten years back, there was nothing like Swiggy. There is nothing like online booking and home delivery of food. Today, the value chain system is so strong, you can get anything and everything online and wherever the place you are, there you will get the product. Value chain has become very powerful and followed by that, volatile market and cost reduction measures. Market volatility, those who are teaching finance must be knowing, stock market has become highly volatile because of this new revolution, new type of product, new type of business and investment. I don't know whether I'm reaching you or not. If I'm not, please ask the question. It is one-way communication. Lack of skilled workforce. Industrial Revolution 4.0 created shortage of skilled workforce. Only few people can survive. Many people have become outdated. Skilled pe people say, Unemployment is there. Why there is unemployment? There is unemployment because of unqualified, not eligible people. Industry is having vacant jobs, but there are no right type of candidates to fill. That is the situation, lack of skilled workforce. Aging society, aging society, and later retirement. Because of industrial revolution, what happened? Health system got improved. When the health and the medical science improved, you know, people live longer. When people live longer, aged population will become more. More aged people will be there, taking care of them, allowing them to work is a big challenge. Followed by that, resource, <laughs> resource efficient and clean urban production is possible because of industrial revolution. 4.0. And one more thing, mass consumption, low volume factory system. You can produce even in small scale and at the same time, mass consumption is possible. Any number of people can be fed by consolidating the distribution and making it available to people. These are all the implications of industrial revolution 4.0. It also made an impact on Working people in the organization. See here, industrial revolution has made an impact on the organizational structure. Organizational structure, gone are the days we are used to speak about vertical organization, five, six different levels of organization. Today, we are talking in terms of matrix organization structure, team, project team type of working environment, flat hierarchy, flat organization, decentralization, these are the things that have become prominent today. And knowledge-oriented leadership. Leadership is not something like a, a manual physical action, it is knowledge-oriented physical action for leadership. And the HR practices are also need to be dealt differently. HR practices like Training, what type of training that we are giving? You need to train people about the technology today. And you need to train people new skills. Skill based, knowledge based industry. All the skills that we knew either to have become redundant, outdated. Say, for instance, uh, I cannot claim myself that I am an experienced teacher. For the last 30, 32 years, I have been teaching. But in front of your Zoom, in front of your uh, online teaching, you know, I'm a learner. I could have taken the help of somebody to adjust the sound system. Technology made all of us to become redundant. Unless we open up our mind and learn new things, we cannot survive. Industrial Revolution 4.0 impacted on training, staffing, compensation. Qualified people, skilled people demand more salaries. 
naturally. Performance appraisal system has to be altered. Our job design got altered. And unless you forget what you have learned, abandon your knowledge and acquire something new, you will become unfit, misfit for the present day business. So that what I want to say precisely, Industrial Revolution 4.0, on the one hand, bringing a lot of opportunities, on the other hand, a number of threats. People who are happy with what they knew are put into hardship. People who thought I know everything are put into test. And people who are contented, you know, they were made to disturb. They were disturbed rather. They were disturbed. Unless you rise and change yourself, you cannot survive any longer. That is the challenge of industrial revolution 4.0. Companies need to alter themselves. Companies need to change themselves to match with this. Therefore, companies, recruitment policies, companies, training, pol training and development policies, companies, compensation policy, everything got altered. And in this situation, we need to teach organizational behavior, the subject to our students, how to make our students to understand the subject, this is a big question. The type of training that we were giving has become redundant. If you have any queries about what I said so far, please ask questions so that we can interact. Or otherwise, I will go further. Did you learn the message? Sir, uh, I know about the uh, key elements of organization behavior, sir. Yes. Tell me, what are the key elements? You want to know? You want to know or you want to say from your side? I, I expect in the, I don't know, sir, but uh, I will tell you. the key elements. I will tell you. Organizational, yes, element, organizational behavior is mainly influenced by four things. First one is the people. Second one is the technology. Third one is the structure, and the fourth one is the environment. Ah. People, people mean understand the people around you. People is made up of individuals. Every individual is special. Every individual is different. How to make different types of individuals to be together? That is the big challenge. Then structure means relationship. See, I and you are related now. I'm a teacher, you are the audience. In the classroom, you may be a teacher, somebody may be a student. Students' responsibilities are different. Teachers' responsibilities are different. Likewise, in the organization, there is a structure. Structure defines authority and responsibility. That is, in other words, relationship. Organizational behavior deals with relationship. At the first instance, people. Second one is relationship. Third one is technology. See, any business or any organization, any organization is dependent on a given technology. What type of technology is presently prevailing that influences everything in life, including the relationship? Say, for instance, there was a day when we were not connected by any means. Just imagine before the invention of telephone by Graham Bell, talking to people in a faraway place was not at all possible. We were writing letters, we were sending messages through pigeons and all. Subsequently, Graham Bell invented phones. We were able to talk to each other. When we were talking over phone, you know, our relations were different, our understandings were different. Today, we are in the era of mobile phones. Mobile phone industry has grown to an extent that today, our life is highly dependent on mobile phones. Without a phone, we think there is no life at all. You will be knowing many people are earning their bread and butter with the help of a phone. 
Am I reaching? And our it, it has become an inseparable part of our, our life. Our relationships, you know, relationships are also dependent on technology. Say, for instance, when there was when there was no phone, we used to go to people and talk to them personally. Relations were so strong. When we got the landline connection, you know, we started speaking on phone. Today, video calls, you know. By with the help of a video call, you can talk to anybody. For years together, people will not meet, but simply they say they are in touch. What what does it mean? We are in touch. We are in touch means we are seeing our videos every day. Technology influences relationships. Technology influences our working environment, our productivity, life, organizational behavior. Deals with technology. Hope you got the third point that I am trying to say. And the fourth one is environment. Environment. Ah, uh, sir. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, today, industrial revolution 4.0, mass production to mass customization production due to radical transformation of technological advancement, which is revolutionizing the entire industry. Yes. Is it really influence of the automation behavior, sir, or not? It it influences the organizational behavior because you cannot think of industry without people. Organizational behavior is concerned with talking to people, making people to work for you. Our style of supervision has changed. Our style of interaction has changed. Just imagine because of this online, you know, student-teacher relationship has changed. I think I am reaching you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It has affected everything, but we have to study from that angle. How industrial revolution 4.0 revolutionized the life, revolutionized the production system, consumption system for for that matter, consumption. I think I am reaching. Otherwise, uh, are we missing? Yes, yes, yes sir, yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Therefore, here. I thought of relating the subject organizational behavior to industrial revolution 4.0 for the simple reason that technology. Technology has changed our working environment. Technology has changed our employability. Technology has changed the style of management. Technology has changed the relationship between employee and the employer. Technology has changed. Employability of the graduate. Employability of the graduate. Can you follow me? I don't know how about other. It's an experiment I am making with this. If you are, uh, you cannot follow, please feel free to ask questions. Hello, Mr. Gupta. Yeah. Yes, sir. 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 Sir, when it compared to sir. yes sir yes sir. Me, yes sir when it compared to the past times so nowadays in the drastically developing technological era so uh, some somewhere uh, we we are witnessing that uh, there are so many uh, distractions detachments some sort of uh, 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 dissatisfaction with sir. interpersonal uh, relationships sir. that we need to address that we need to address Organizational behavior people must address this problem. Interpersonal relationship, communication for that matter, communication. Your coming, your leadership for that matter. The earlier style of leadership which will not work today because of the technology. Most of our ideologies have become outdated today because of this new technology. People can predict, say for instance. With the advent of internet, you know, teaching has become difficult. Down at the day, teachers used to go with a sheet of notes and used to lecture. But today, everything is in the mobile phone of a student. Unless you make something different, something special, there is no reason for the student to look at you. I, I think I am reaching. Life has totally affected by. Technology. Without technology, you cannot speak of any business. I am bringing people and the technology through it. 
organizational behavior concerned with studying the human behavior. Industrial 4.0 is technology related. How technology has influenced? We have lots of things to go further. In addition to this, I also wanted to relate the subject organizational behavior to the post-pandemic situation. The pandemic, which was an unexpected, unprecedented event in everybody's life today, we have witnessed. We have witnessed globally an event that had not happened for for the last hundred years. If anybody believes that it is something like uh, the famine of 1930, after hundred years, the world has witnessed such a situation. What are the implications of this? On the subject, organizational behavior that we need to study. I will be taking you to us now about the pandemic. I want you people to speak rather than I say anything about the pandemic. How does the pandemic affect the working environment? Understand in simple words, organizational behavior is concerned with understanding the working environment. People on work, people in the organization. Organizations can be anywhere, starting from a family. Don't you think uh, families are affected because of COVID and because of industrial revolution? Sir, yes. Sir. Very much affected in metropolitan cities. Yes. Bangalore. Even in the village, you cannot rule out. Affected everybody's life. Therefore, assuming that you got some points about. Industrial Revolution 4.0. I will be taking you towards the next incident that is COVID-19. Uh, as everyone is a party to that, I am not going to elaborate too much. Thereafter, I will take you towards the subject organizational behavior and its challenges. You will be knowing we encountered this COVID-19 when the Indian economy was already at a strain. We were at difficulty. This made us to think in terms of lockdown, starvation, ill health, violence, indebtedness, persistent loss of income, loss of life, loss of demand on the one side, and many people compare it with the depression 1930. How it has affected the life of people? I am taking you towards a simple theory. Look at this. I have made an attempt to relate with the diagram that I got. See, education. Our education system has become a new type that is online learning. Online learning cannot be a substitute for offline teaching, face-to-face, one-to-one conversation. But today, online interactions have become inevitable. However, powerful your technology is, it is not a substitute for direct interaction. Followed by that, our online learning are influencing our lifestyle. Lifestyle, you know, you can understand what is lifestyle. Lifestyle deals with the way in which we are living, the way in which we spend our money, earn our money, use the product. What type of houses that we have constructed? What type of products that we use? What are our hobbies? What are our relationships? This is about lifestyle. And at the same time, lifestyle influences the livelihood. Livelihood is connected with employment. The impact of COVID-19 on the employment lifestyle. Education indirectly influences the power, space, time, and the life stage. Life stage means it is it can be based on the education, the age, beginning of the career. It is the life stage. Whether you are young, old, new, experienced, educated, uneducated, that makes your life stage, and the experience that you are getting. Through the education, will lead towards your type of employment and the type of family life 
that you are leading. In addition to this, change in government policy, socio economic, and cultural changes on the other side are also making an impact. Now, I will be asking you a question. How do you think the pandemic has influenced organizational behavior? How does it have impacted the functioning of people in a factory? Is the question is clear to you? I don't know whether I'm clear or not. Please, if you cannot follow Sir, me. Sir, people under stress, especially employees are under stress because of uh, pandemic situation. Maybe, maybe they may be having a mindset that they may lose the job further like that. It creates uh, stress among them, sir. It is my opinion. Any other thing? Impact of impact in the working yes. Yes, sir. Uh, it has to be uh, so for work from home. Is, uh, given an opportunity to develop the work from home culture. Wonderful. Okay, what are the consequences plus from the negative points of the work from home culture uh, developed uh, the diff uh, lot of distance between, uh, I mean, uh, personal uh, interpersonal communications are very lagging behind, sir. Okay. It created a gap. Reduce the, reduce the traffic at Bangalore, sir. That's a major plus point. Okay, reduce the traffic. Traffic at Bangalore. Okay, okay. Sir, it creates more unemployment problem. It led to unemployment. Sir, actually, uh, they are losing the organization climate culture, especially when oh, they used to work in the organization. But present yeah. at home, they are not supposed to be working in home. Sir, it, it made us, uh, no. It, sir, it reduced the cost of employee. Technology. Now we are well equipped with the technology. Okay. It has reduced the cost of production and increased the sales and the revenue for the company. Profitability of some companies has increased. Some of the companies... And the loyalty, loyalty of the employees towards the company also decreased because many people, as we've seen, uh, they started to work for two or three companies. Loyalty is not expected in any... No, that's not the loyalty. That will be increase in efficiency of the employees. Ah, but from the uh, employer point of view, the competence of the employee is provided to three companies. That's a positive thing. That is the competence of the employee. But for, uh, from the, if your employer, if your employee is working for uh, unknowingly for the two companies without recently, Infosys is going again to stop this culture. But it's uh, the employee efficiencies will be increasing. Uh, efficiency, I do agree. Efficiency has increased. This is how. This is how. The definition of many things got changed. The definition, relationship, efficiency, loyalty, caring, caring, profit, all these things got altered. As a result of that, in the of COVID, the we need to think. Sir, it is majorly affected to MS, MS, sir. micro units, especially many micro units were closed, sir. Yes. And many people, uh, employees, they were lost their job. And the major business units, sir, in micro level and uh, small business units, they are facing problem of that cash and carry system. Yes. Earlier, the supply chain was like that. So they were supplied their, uh, what we call inputs uh, on a credit basis of 45 days, 90 days, like that. Because of the... Uh, what you call shortage in the production production was not done during during that period and all and uh, the supplier insisted that yeah. the businessman has to only they have to pay the money and they have to carry the what you call uh, whatever the inputs required for them that is the yeah, cash and carry system yeah, the king. Yeah, yeah, the and one more is the transport cost also increased after the particular covid pandemic and all. but at the same time you must not forget Many corporates have become triple their size before the pandemic. Huh? Many companies have become rich overnight because of this pandemic. You know, that to big companies, big companies who are in the fourth position, fifth position, have reached the second or the first position in terms of wealth. You know, most of them have made huge profits because of this pandemic. Somebody got improved their life, somebody's life got disturbed, somebody has become confident, someone has lost hope, 
two popular things that uh, we can relate to people you know helplessness for some people hopelessness for some people and it has become a heaven for some people the pandemic has created an opportunity for many people some new type of business came into existence for some people it gave the confidence some people afresh started new business small scale food packing catering some people started new business and at the same time some people have lost everything that they have earned and saved so far they put into growth paper they have become paper so pandemic has affected the working environment vehemently from different dimensions that we need to understand before i give a break let us have a look at the impact of covid-19 on the working situation i just made an attempt to list couple of things that i came across quickly i will run through uncertainty has become the certain thing in every working organization there is no guarantee of anything many people have lost their jobs some of them came back some of them are assured that they will be called back waiting for their order some people are still unable to rejoin and getting call every day people asking for new type of opportunity jobs and things like that meeting people who say they lost their job because of the pandemic uncertainty has become the certain thing in the business hybrid uh, and human centric connection hybrid working environment online online has become popular along with the online some people are suggesting for 50 50 percent of the work can be online only even the government encouraged online working and it has become a solution say for instance some of the companies in bangalore because of this heavy rain and the flood you know wanted their people to continue with online working only working from home home only hybrid working culture as a result of this the interaction connection emotion are missing respect obedience are the outdated things these days because of the new technology and there is a shortage of critical talent talent is in shortage people are in large number no doubt india has the highest population of youngsters but all our youngsters are not trained to cope up with this covid and uh, industrial revolution 4.0 both of them have made many people to continue to be unemployed because of their and not having required talent followed by that in the working environment what has happened every individual has become self centric self centric selfish i wanted to protect themselves in the background of the covid experience the covid that has created created lot of fear in the minds of people in terms of isolation wearing the mask things like that the isolation wearing the mask lockdown has created a sense of fear in the minds of the people that fear continued to be prevalent even in the working environment today people are suspicious they wanted to protect themselves self centric they have become and as a result of that not bothered about the other people compared to the earlier days today in the working places everybody has become individualistic individual benefit individual safety individual well being has become the most prominent thing and this is an harmful behavior this is an harmful behavior where people are become selfish followed by that one of the challenge is to manage diversity diversity means all types of people will be there people from different backgrounds nationalities will be there they need to be balanced they need to be treated equally 
and inclusiveness in every action needs to be practiced and along with that in the industry you could see high turnover of employees number of people leaving the job number of people after quitting a job starting their own business has increased many people started going for that that is another thing followed by that large number of generation z type of employees you can understand who are the generation z type of employees means people who have born after 1990 those who are born after 1990 are in large number you can think of their character ob organizational behavior prescribes the natural tendencies and the behavior of different generations what are the characteristics of generation z think for a while and everybody is with a desire of saving time having convenience caring for cost effectiveness enjoyment because everybody thinks life is short we don't know when i am going to be affected pandemic has taught us a lesson it is not the money power resources that matter anybody anything can happen to anybody so that people got into the mode of enjoyment as a result they think of personal reward personal benefit new type of communication new type of communication hyper lapse behavior what is this hyper lapse behavior you know people don't have patience they don't have patience they want the things to happen immediately within 10 minutes that type of behavior leads to a new type of authority new type of responsibility controlling people has become a challenge if you control too much they will resign people don't hesitate to quit the job today job hopping many people use the word job hopping job hoppers are too many these days if they are not happy they will resign and go even students you know you might have noticed taking a break for a year they don't worry one or the day students used to worry about a year now they will say i will take the exam next year i don't worry people got into the enjoyment mood on the one side on the other side because of the fear of spreading of the covid 19 isolation wearing a mask something like lockdown made people to learn to live in isolation loneliness is not a problem for them on the one side on the other side this loneliness made them to think in terms of developing relationship with a preferred type of community a preferred type of group now they have a chance of making friends therefore in the organization when you make people to work together who will work together what is their socializing pattern who gels with whom these issues also become a matter of concern for the managers in the organization this is what we need to think i think uh, i have elaborated too much and uh, i don't know whether i was able to connect these issues with the subject organization behavior till i am making an attempt let us take a break at this point of time for about uh, 10 minutes if it is uh, 3:30 we shall reassemble at 3:40 take 10 minutes break and let us meet again